Dennis Swartz. There is a man today in a private attorney general boat under the Private Attorney General Act of 1866. Ooh, I forgot my paperwork. May I grab it, please? Certainly. I'm not going to talk about pot. <laughs> but I will say this. The encounter I had with our police here a couple of days ago, I think they all need to be smoking a little bit of pot. Wow, the resources you uh, brought in for that. Are you talking to me, Dan? Uh, council members. I missed a city meeting over the centennial celebration to 10 fires down in the city. Tickled to death, we were finally getting them burned. Two inmates and four city workers were down there and started the fires. I merely was the idiot, excuse me, that decided to miss the meeting and stay and tend the fires, Aaron uh, Blackman also. Well, the next morning, there was a young child that came in. He was probably 14, 15. Told me he was homeschooled and he wanted to help. Boy, we've been working down there and never had any offers of help from anyone. And uh, this kid was helping. I paid him in a Frisbee. And uh, the next thing I know, uh, your bicycle cop that I've already explained to you threatened me in front of a whole courtroom full of people, including the judge that should have reported him. And we've already went over the fact that there's a big write-up. He's a Navy-trained SEAL. He has the ability to hurt me. And I'll tell you what, I can be a little irritable guy myself, but I'll tell you what, if I had somebody accusing me of the things I was accusing this police officer of, I'd have radioed in and said, hey, can you send somebody else down here? I have a bad time with Mr. Swartz, so I'm not going to antagonize the situation. Everyone knew. I sent an email off the night before explaining why that the city had asked me to stay with the fires. Well, then the bicycle cop doesn't follow protocol and he calls Matt Smart. Well, dude, I, maybe I'm not being blunt enough, but I've accused Matt Smart of major criminal activity in this town that I know is factual history. And I asked us for a stay away order from Jonathan and the chief when we first hired him. And this situation seems to be asking, why call Matt Smart in out of the school to come down there and bring a gun in on me down there? That's just ridiculous. I mean, even if I was a cop, I'd be saying, hey, look, can you send Wood? Nobody called Officer Woods. Nobody called Sergeant Beck, who obviously would have sent it. I recorded all this, and they ran off the child, Matt Smart integrated and interrogated the child without any counsel there. There used to be a time, people, when you couldn't talk to our kids without their having their lawyer there or their parents there. They scared that poor little kid. When he left, that's when I was scared, but somebody happened to hear on the scanner that they called in the state police. So Aaron Blackman came down. That's when the chief had come in and stated on video camera that I'm dazed and delusional. Oh, you must be on drugs. My, my work words, my inmates were not here starting these fires the other day. I would know where. Well, you know, I don't know whether you guys remember all this stuff, but the chief keeps popping up saying he knows this and he knows that. You know, last, last month was, oh, no drug dogs. And he says, well, I'll wait till I get the memo on that. Right here, this, what, three-year-old U.S. Department of Justice letter, and I'll close this off. It's obviously a memo for everyone, including judges, which is to the point of, you know, I'm caught between printing news and my Read Sport Legal News and trying to give both sides. And if you could just give me a little graciousness here. I don't want to put videos up like I have of what happened to me with all these police coming in. And bringing their guns in there and all sitting there making fun of me. It was like being in fifth grade all over again. And you guys will see the video. I'm trying not to put these things up because you know why? Then nobody wants to move here. I would love for people to move here. Quite frankly, we need to start searching for a new chief of police, a new lieutenant, and a new Trevor Gardner. And if you guys can't seem to put some movement that way, 
in getting rid of these officers that are causing these problems. I feel no more trust in Jonathan Abel to protect me. And I kind of thought we'd make this funny and I'd come in here and cite all of you for your animals getting off a leash. There was no reason for them to come down there and make fun of me and make fun of the hard work we've been doing down there. I don't do stuff to get credit for it, but I damn sure I'm not going to be stood over the top of and leered with a bunch of people with guns talking a bunch of crap. So I got one last thing here. These unlawful toes, I will release these to the public on unlawful toes. We have known for plenty of time that taking these people's cars is absolutely totally illegal. You don't have a warrant to take these. Think of how many people could afford their insurance if we weren't sending 300 and some dollars to the city on the poorest people here. You're taking and causing them three to nine to twelve hundred dollars. People have had to pay to get their belongings back out of these unlawful act. Ron doesn't need the damn money. We're not going to live like this, and I, you all might think I'm crazy, but we need other revenue than these police preying on these impounds, and it needs to stop, and it's totally illegal. So I would like you guys to have Jonathan set up something with you guys. He, pro you, he promised us years ago when we hired this chief of police that there was going to be, I was going to be on it, and there was going to be a citizen panel of as many private citizens as there were you guys to keep an eye on all of them. Because I'm telling you what, guys, these guys are out of control. Thank you. I love you. I appreciate you. Let's move forward with some of these things. Thanks for coming in, Dennis. Yes, sir. You state your name and address? Yes, hi. I'm Jim Beveridge. I'm in uh, 1830 Beach in Oregon. I uh, own Coastline Realty. I'm a realtor. And I've been working with Herbal Choices and I helped them to purchase all their locations. I, I just wanted to talk to you guys about, you know, I mean, this is a free country and people have choices. And, you know, over three quarters of the people.